Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alejandra Landano and today I am super excited to have a guest speaker. This is Stephanie, Teaching Stephanie, and I love to call her a lesson planning expert. So real quick, Stephanie, could you introduce us? Could you introduce yes. yourself to us? Yes, so I'm Teacher Stephanie. Um, that's my handle pretty much everywhere. On my YouTube channel, it's Teaching Stephanie on Instagram, it's Teaching Stephanie, and my website, teachingstephanie.com. Um, and I was going to do teacher, but I found out I was getting a lot more help from other people too to help me with my own teaching. So I was like, you're teaching me a lot of the time. So sometimes oh, I like I'm that. teaching, <laughs> sometimes they're teaching me. So it's teaching Stephanie. So that's mm -hmm. that's kind of my thing. <laughs> Oh, that's so, that's, I like that. I like the meaning behind it. I need to switch mine, yeah. honestly, soon. <laughs> well, how about you tell us really briefly, how did you start teaching online? When did you start? What do you teach for? Yes. So I was a elementary school teacher too. I taught third grade and um, I, I loved teaching. I love my students. They're seniors now. So those little third graders are now seniors. Oh my goodness. It's been eight years and they I follow some of them on Instagram and I'm like I'm just gonna scroll past you're still a little third grader in my mind you're not that big but I loved it I I was made to be a teacher not because I'm good at it but because I love doing it I I mm -hmm. love teaching and when I had my first son I I stopped I wanted to stay home with him but I always felt like part of me was missing um, I needed to be in the classroom some way, somehow. And my good friend, Nancy Taylor, who I grew up playing soccer with, introduced me to VIP kids. She was like, oh, nice. Hey, you might like this. It's kind of fun. And <laughs> I, I think it's so funny because she had all these YouTube videos and I was like, Oh yeah, that's, it seemed kind of like a scam. Like I was like, that's mm -hmm. not real. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to be like in your pyramid scheme? Like what's going on? And right. she's like, no, it's, it's the real deal. It's great. And so I, I tried it and I loved it. I loved VIP kid. And I loved that I didn't have to do any lesson planning, but to be honest, I kind of do that on the side anyway. It's like a hobby of mine. I can show you like when my son was in preschool, we did a little homeschool preschool and I was like, I'll create the lesson plan. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> who does that? And I'm like, I do. I'm a geek. I love doing that for our church group, I'm like, oh, I'll, I've got like a whole thing. I can create this curriculum. I can create this format. I can do it. And they were like, wow, that's great. Why do you want to do this? <laughs> and I, when I thought about it, I really love lesson planning. I like the structure mm -hmm. of it. I like coming up with ideas for activities and really taking the learner from knowing nothing about something to mm -hmm. accomplishing the objective and getting them through that class doing what you intended them to do so I found out I really liked that part even though with the AP kid it was so nice not to I found out I really do like it and without school I loved that I could do that and really customize it to make it my own um, so now I get to teach without school and also do that for other clients I create lesson plans for them Oh, that's awesome. That's super awesome. I'll definitely ask you again to share a little bit about what you do. Um, but I wanted to, I actually asked different teachers on Instagram and Facebook, like questions they have about lesson planning, because I feel like lots of new out school teachers are definitely struggling either starting creating lessons or creating their lessons more to be more engaging. So I have just a few questions that I thought I would ask you. Um, and then we can talk a little bit more about your personal experience. So the first question I had was that if someone has never created their own lesson, what is like the first steps you could suggest? Um, first, I tell them to think about the objective. Everything will fall under that. Once you know what the student will do by the end of class, you can create activities after that. So um, I always am like, what do you want them to walk away with knowing or what do you want to walk away with them creating? Because okay. if you know that, then you can go, the student will be able to blank. They'll be mm -hmm. able to 
name three chemical compounds or they'll be able to create a fall leaf tree or yeah. you know whatever it is I'm thinking mm -hmm. of different clients but they will be able to do this and you'll have one sentence that that's what they'll do and from there you can go okay so if they're coming into my classroom knowing nothing how do I connect the dots from nothing to that objective and that will create your whole lesson plan Oh, I like that. It's almost like you're working backwards. So you want to figure out what the students want to know at the end of your class, and then you figure out how you can make them reach that goal. I like that yes. explanation. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Exactly. That's actually really yeah. helpful. Um, another oh, question I got <laughs> was what out school class type do you recommend for new teachers? So if it's that listing their oh. first class on out school, what class type would you recommend? Um, I tell them to think to do a one time class. Um, I know OutSchool recommends that too, but one that could transition to an ongoing class or a course. Okay. So mm -hmm. I think ongoing classes are awesome because you keep the student. They're like a little mm -hmm. weekly subscription service, but sometimes you need just the one time class to get over your own fears, to even just mm -hmm. draw in the students. So it kind of leads them through this funnel of you you start with one time with me and then you can take this ongoing class so right. for me I do this mythological creatures class and it's kind of a sample of my ongoing class where we talk about a new mythological creature each week and it leads them to that and I've had other teachers that do that they start with one and then they go to an ongoing class that they're talking about something new each week using their same format from the one time mm -hmm. class. Perfect. That's actually the same exact thing I recommend as well. Oh, good. Oh, good. We're on the mm -hmm. same page. Yes. <laughs> very, very good. All right. Another question I got was what are some tools you love to use to help make your lessons engaging? Like, do you use any use presentations? Do you use any fancy tools, what do you do to make them engaging? When I first started out, um, I had nothing. I had me and a dollar store multiplication chart. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. we'll point to this. And then I hey. just talk and I'd have them bring a piece of paper and be like, okay, let me turn on the whiteboard on Zoom. And mm -hmm. I'd write different problems. And that was it. That was my whole thing. And then with each lesson, I'd start to create a slideshow presentation. And then okay. from the whole presentation, I made a workbook that they could follow along with. And then I, for the last lesson, made a Nearpod lesson where they could do nice. games and things with. So mm -hmm. it's evolved over a year to a lot of things. And I think if you were to look at it, you'd be like, whoa, I can't do that. That's, that's so much. But it, it started out with just me and my dollar store multiplication chart. And that was yeah. it. So I do a lot of things to keep it engaged, but it's, it's what I find a need for. Okay, where am I losing them at the lesson today? Maybe I can swap these two slides or maybe mm -hmm. I can add in a different thing here and you'll find that too. And I, I tell people this all the time. When I was teaching for ESL companies, I would think, oh, I wish that slide came before this one or I wish they mm -hmm. would add this here, correct this thing. And now I get to do that. I get to make it exactly yes. how I want to teach it. So it, when people say, oh, I have to make the lessons, I'm like, no, you get to make the lessons. <laughs> it's yes. really awesome. That's actually another tip almost in itself that when you create a class, you can constantly be working to improve that class and make it better and better. I love that. So you start super simple and you add things slowly as you see oh, is this class working well with students? Is it booking or is there a way I can make it better? So that's really, really good advice. Oh, thank you. I, I hope it's it's helpful to just get you started. Just, yes, just go for, for sure. it and start teaching and then you'll mm -hmm. see what you need to improve. Awesome, thank you for that. All right, we're almost done with our questions. The next one is, so let's look, it says, what is a good structure for group lessons? So I think this person's like asking, how do you kind of format your classes? That's a great question. And it's always custom to, you know, the niche, the topic, the whatever your objective is. But I usually do kind of a similar thing to this. I start with piquing their interest, 
with, you know, like you could tell a joke, you could give a riddle, you could do like a little sample of what they're going to see at the end. Mm -hmm. It could be any of those things just to pique their interest and draw them in. And then from there, you're going to start teaching them the concepts and going, okay, we're going to learn today. Six times eight is 48. And we're going to learn this rhyme and we're going to do this. And you teach them over and over again. The next thing I do is like a learning game where they almost don't mm -hmm. know that they are reviewing the concepts, but they are. Of what you just taught, you're reviewing those concepts. So learning activities go in there after you've taught them. And then for a conclusion, I like for them to show what they created. Um, do a review problem, something like that. And if they did create something, I always make sure everybody gets a turn to share. Always, okay. always, like mm -hmm. they always get a turn to share because they'll want to. And I tell them, if you want to finish, you can put it in our class gallery. Yeah. And that's the review page. So I get a review out of it, but they get to share with me and I type a message back to them. That looks amazing. I'm so proud mm -hmm. of you. And so that's kind of how I format the lesson plan is peak interest, your main lesson teaching, learning activities, and then a conclusion of show and tell or reviewing a problem or something like that. That's good. And, you know, actually, I do something similar towards the end. If we created something, I give students the opportunity to share. And I've actually had reviews where parents appreciate that you're letting each student in your class actually talk and participate. So that yes. is something that's really good for those small group classes to let every student have a turn to speak and share. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, this one's another interesting one. It says, how long does it usually take for you to create one lesson? Um, I'm, I'm getting better at estimating the time, but First, it took me a long time to like sit down and format the lesson. Now I do it for other clients all the time. I usually have about three a week that I'm creating new lesson plans for. And um, if it's a one-time class, it usually takes me between an hour, an hour and a half. Um, I do a half hour consultation. So you could say from start to finish, it's two hours for me to create the listing, create the whole plan for them, type it all up make it pretty, even the class picture, all of that is nice. two hours. That's um, awesome, actually. It, would, it is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. if it's a course, I can do up to mm -hmm. 12 lessons in a course. Okay. And for that, it takes longer. And it depends. I had one person doing Shakespearean plays, and then I had one person doing ABCs. So it's totally different, different depending on those things and how mm -hmm. we're going to format them and find the resources for them and those things. But I would, I would say upwards of like maybe between four and six hours for those. So mm -hmm. that's kind of, that's where I'm at with estimating the time. I'm like, oh, how long yeah. is this going to take me? But that one kind of depends more on the complexity and those yes. kind of things. Yeah. And I think when, when you, like you said, when you're first starting, it may take you more time, but as you get better, whether you're creating your lessons or someone else is doing it for you, it will get faster. So I know like for me, roughly, it takes me an hour to two hours for one class. So if I have a camp, a five day camp, that camp might take me four to five hours to complete everything. But of course it will depend from person to person, kind of like you said, and the complexity of the subject. That's a really interesting one with Shakespeare. <laughs> Yes, yes. They're doing um, Shakespearean acting, which is so exciting. Wow. And they were, cool. you know, non-traditional teacher, but they were like, mm -hmm. I really want to teach acting. And I'm like, I'm excited for the class. I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. so, I hope they have so much fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. All right. My last one. Oh, no, I have two more. Sorry. What is your favorite lesson to teach? Oh, that's hard. I like teaching multiplication and I hope that shows through a lot of my students are like you are like super jazzed about multiplication and I'm like good I hope you get excited about it too and I think I, that's the best thing you can do is if you're excited about something teach that don't just teach it because you're like oh that that seems kind of popular that was on the parent request yeah. list teach it um 
I teach mythological creatures too. It's a weird combo, I know, but <laughs> yeah. I teach that one. But that class is so much fun because the learners are so excited to be there. They are Aww. like my kind of people like, oh, I love Harry Potter. Oh, I love this. And it is so much fun to teach that one too, because they're really excited to be there. It's such a fun class. So the other one, Aww. the parents may have signed them up and they're like reluctant to right. be there. And hopefully at the end, they're not as like sad to be doing multiplication, mm -hmm. but the other one is totally kid approved. They're like, I mm -hmm. want to be here for this. So that one's fun to teach. I love that. That's actually good. I like too, how you mentioned you have one that's like academic and then you have one that's more of like a hobby. And that's, some, that's a really good tip as well. When you're starting, or if you're an out school teacher, try to have one of each, a little bit of academic, because I've noticed from my experience, academic does really, really well during the school year and then have a class that's more like a hobby or something more fun. Um, so then during the summer and during holidays, students will probably take more of those classes. So that's awesome. Exactly. And that's what happened to me. I did the fun mm -hmm. class during the summer when I first applied and then it had really low bookings in the fall. Yeah. So I needed an academic class to kind of pull them in and parents will bribe their kids. They're like, if you take the multiplication class, then I'll sign you up for the fun class. Yeah. <laughs> so I had I students guess. take both and they're like, purely, they're like, they said, if I got through the camp, then I could do the fun class. <laughs> So that's, that's a funny. great way to do that's, that. That's good though. That's good. And then they yes. probably love your teaching style as well. So, oh, that's nice. I hope they do. Yeah. I hope it's fun yeah. for them. Okay. So my last thing, kind of a takeaway. So if you could give out school teachers, maybe one or two tips about lesson planning, what would you give them? What's some tips you could share? Um, I think the best thing you can do is to think of that objective statement so that you can align everything. Mm -hmm. Like we said, work backwards. What is the end goal here with this class? And I know that's hard because sometimes you're saying, well, I wanna teach them the ABCs or I wanna teach them Shakespearean acting. And you're like, well, I don't know what they'll walk away with. But if you can have that, everything will align to that objective in the end and you'll have such a good outcome and parents will want to sign up because they'll know exactly what their students mm -hmm. are going to walk away with it could be a physical thing like at the end we will create our own mythological creatures or it could be in the end of this class you will know all the multiplication facts zero through 12 mm -hmm. but that objective is huge and then and how i write my objectives are the student will be able to fill in the blank yep. so if you can fill that in <laughs> you'll have your whole lesson ready to go from there just work backwards <laughs> perfect yeah thank you thank you for all the tips you shared today now I know you mentioned it towards the beginning where we can find you can you just let all the listeners know where can we find you if they want to work with you how can they do that yes so you can find me on my youtube channel it's teaching stephanie um, and I'll send all the links to you, but mm -hmm. teaching Stephanie is where I'm at on YouTube. Um, I also have an Instagram handle teaching Stephanie, mm -hmm. and that's kind of more daily day in the life stuff the that life. I'm yep. sharing. <laughs> this is what happened day while I was teaching. This is what I'm doing with my kids. It's a little bit of this and that, but I do share tips there too on teaching. And so you can find me there. Um, and if you want to book a lesson, lesson consultation, I can leave the link there too. You just type in your email address and I send you a little calendar invite for you to schedule whenever you want to. And we do 30 minute consultation where we go through what are you, what are your lesson ideas? If you don't have ideas, I can help you come up with some, um, what are you thinking for activities? Do you need help with activities? And my goal with that is that you walk away confident in a plan so that you can either go and do that yourself and go, okay, I know the plan now. I can go and list it and go teach it. If you're still like, okay, I, I don't quite know how to phrase this or do this, you can have me do that for you. So I can create a custom lesson plan from what we talked about. So that's the goal of the consultation. 
Awesome. Those are great. Great. That's a great service. So I will definitely have everything linked down below. Um, Stephanie, thank you so much for coming today. We appreciate all the tips, all of the ideas for lesson planning. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I'll see you later. Bye, Stephanie. Bye. Thank you.